Hey guys, Chris again from ClassicVWBugs.com and in this video I want to talk to you about outer door handles. We're going to talk about how to remove them and then I'm going to go through uh, some other door handles that I have here to break down the different year changes and what to do when you face an aftermarket door handle and uh, how to make it work properly. Let's get to it. Okay, to remove the door handle is actually pretty simple. Uh, all you really got to do is when you open your door, just pull away the door seal like you see right here and then you'll find two little screws here. The earlier bugs basically from 67 and down had two screws that held in the door handle. So basically we're going to get these little five millimeter tapered head screws out. Now a lot of times if you're restoring your beetle and you're stripping it down, a lot of times these screws can get stuck and they're frozen in there and many times the head does break off. So uh, keep in mind, you, if that does happen, you'd have to run a tap. Okay. This is a 62 beetle here. So, handle's pretty straightforward. It's usually... Let me get this screw out. Oops, okay usually just comes right out. These earlier ones, they might have a hook in the front here with a little part. And there's your door handle. So here's your hook on the little smaller end that hooks into the door. So a lot of times you might have to push the handle towards the front of the car to pop that out. Okay, now a lot of times your seals might be all corroded and might be all stuck to the, uh, to the handle itself. Sometimes after uh, earlier paint jobs these guys they leave the handles on the cars and they're painting around so things get stuck and stuff so all right so that's basically how you remove your door handle pretty straightforward pretty simple okay so now that we have our handle off of our door um, I showed you how to take them off uh, I have a series of handles here on the table that basically are broken down by year changes and such so I'm going to start with these uh, ice pick door handles that you see over here. Now these are the very early door handles that were used up until the 55 Beetles. Once they hit 56, they changed it slightly, but they still had the ice pick look. This is the ice pick door handle, so there's no mount, there's no uh, double mount on the door. Uh, so you just have the two screws that hold it into the door and then that's it. They call them the ice pick door handles, kind of similar to what they had on refrigerators back then in the 50s. So, but what you can see is from 55 and earlier door handles, they had this hook, or they had this claw here that stuck out, and it moved like a slider in a way, or like a, uh, a lever in the door. So when you pulled it, the claw moved this way, moved towards the front of the car, okay? So uh, that's what they were like back then. And they still repop these right now, and they're actually pretty good repops. Uh, CIP1.com has those, that's where I usually get them. Uh, I mean, of course the keys are not, you know, original looking, but they do work and they, they work pretty good. So, once they hit 56, that's when they still had the ice pick door handle, but they got rid of that claw, and now it's more of just a push action. So when you open the, uh, when you move the handle, you just more or less had this button pushing out. Um, now, this, were, this was all the way up until about 59, and then once uh, 60 came around, they went to this uh, push-button push button style that we just took off that 62, okay? This is an original handle, um, as you can see it inside here. This, this shaft here pushes the mechanism inside the door to open the door. Okay, they basically had this up until about early 64, and then from 64 onwards, they kind of went to a different style. It's the same looking handle, but you had more of an intricate mechanism going on here, as you can see. Okay, it's pretty much the same action, though, when it came to opening the door. And then once 66 came around, or mid to late 66, they went towards the one-year, or was the so-called one-year only door handles. I have a video on the 67 door handles, but late 66 had the similar door handle. Um, it was a push button, and it was kind of, only like I said, about a year or so, they used this kind of handle. Um, and then from 68 onward, it was all the same handle, 68 to 79. They all look like this. Okay, so there's no push button anymore. The lever was on the inside here, the button. And this actually took only one screw, 
instead of two screws to hold the handle in, and that screw is actually a six millimeter, not a five millimeter on the earlier handles. So those are your handles basically very briefly to break up the years. Okay, so the unfortunate problem we face today with door handles is, of course, aftermarket. I have a couple of aftermarket handles here, and I want to show you the differences between the aftermarket and the originals. And the problems that we're having with some of these aftermarket handles is that the buttons aren't functioning right, and a lot of times is when in, you do press the button in, it's not uh, giving the mechanism inside the door enough push to where it unlatches from the striker plate on the uh, door post. I'll show you that in a minute. But... Let me go through and show you two different handles. One's aftermarket and one is not. And you can see the difference in a way of how uh, there could be things that are a little problematic. Okay, so here's an original, the 62 uh, handle. Again, this was from 60 up until early 64. Uh, this handle worked. And they do sell aftermarkets, but this is an original here. And you can tell it's pretty original. Um, you find a VW logo in there. And, uh, you know, it's a little grimy or whatever. And usually the originals had a solid... Uh, handle here as you see the aftermarket uh, it does not okay and of course you can look in here and inside the handle it says made in Brazil and of course you know you can kind of tell of course it's aftermarket now let's look at the heads of them here if you can see these heads okay of course one is the drivers okay handle because it has the lock mechanism on it this one is solid button passenger doors always had the solid button it was not locked uh, from the outside although you can buy the aftermarket with the key and put that on the passenger side as well but let's take a look at the uh, the two differences here um, you can point out there are subtle differences in the way the head of this handle is okay you see even just these two compared to these two okay down here how thick it is here and how it's not thick here so you can see aftermarket is always slightly different always I guess less there less meat is always on the aftermarket you know to to make these things a little more inexpensive um, so what we're always facing now with aftermarket is this push action to then really unlock the car or, or have the door open efficiently so i'm going to show you a couple tricks of what we can do to try to help that okay so here's inside the door and when you open it, when you push the, pull the handle or press the button, if you have an early car ice pick, when you push, when you pull the ice pick, or when you press the button, these early doors have a, see that little shaft right there that pushes to open the door. Okay, now let me come over here for a second. Here's your mechanism to open the door. And you have this paw here that then locks into place on your striker plate. Now, a lot of times, when you press this paw in, or when you press the button in to open your door, this paw on an after, with an aftermarket handle will maybe go about that far. As you can see, it's still sticking out. A lot of times, I, when I use these handles, the door then sticks. It does not want to open. So what I have to do is I have to then reach in through the window here and then use the regular, the inside handle, to open it okay this way and then the the paw will actually clear and go into the mechanism here like it's supposed to so of course aftermarket doesn't want to work correctly so what do we do come over here discovered a way see these little rubber hats you get these like on your wheel cylinders if you buy brand new wheel cylinders they have these on the bleeders and uh sometimes you can use a rubber grommet uh, but you got to see, you know, rubber grommet doesn't have a sealed end on it. So see if you can rummage around and find something like this. All you need is just a little extra to push that shaft. So what we do, let's grab a little rubber grommet. And I found these to fit nice and snug on the push button here. On that shaft. That just gives it a little extra space this way or a little extra length. So when you press the button in, now you got some better push and that mechanism will now clear. See what I mean? Now it's cleared enough. That's what the button will do. It'll clear that. But since this is rubber, what I do recommend is just, you know, put a little grease on this so it slides good. You know, we don't, we don't want any binding. And so far that seems to work. 
The only other option I can say is for you to take out, you'd have to take out the mechanism here and maybe put this on a grinding wheel and try to shave this down a little bit so it clears. But, you know, I, I, I'd rather not do that. So, there's your one way that you can uh, rectify that problem. I've, I've only seen that problem with, say, 56, you know, and, and, and later door handles. I'm having that problem where it's clear, not clear and right. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not. It's hit or miss sometimes, depending on what batch uh, of handles you're getting in, you know. So, uh, but yeah, that's a little nice little trick there. Here's a 58 Beetle we've been wrapping up, and we put new door handles on this car, and this was definitely one of the cars, uh, one of the handles that had that stick problem, but now it opens okay, and you can see here, as we open it, that paw goes all the way up now. Okay, it was not clearing with this new handle that we bought, so we put that little rubber hat on it, and now we cleared the striker plate. Here's a 51 Beetle that we have here, so 55 and earlier had a different door. As you can see here, the door is ribbed. It's got these door wedges on them, okay? See the wedges? And as you can see, his same ice pick door handle, but different mechanism here. So usually these handles, these aftermarket handles have been okay, so when you press this in, usually clears okay. Striker plate is completely different as well. Now, we're going to put our handle back on the door, and the best thing to do on these early handles is Basically, like I said, you got a hook on the one end, so you want to start, just kind of place it in, and then you pull it forward, okay? Okay, so when you get your screws, I usually like to start it on my screwdriver. Hold the handle in. Sometimes if the holes don't line up, I notice when, uh, if I have an aftermarket handle, the holes don't want to line up perfectly in the door. So what you can do is get yourself an awl, or like a pointy implement, poke it in the hole, and just try to move it to get it into place. Once you have it into place, start the other screw in, tighten it down, but don't go too tight, and then get the other screw in, and then you should be able to, uh, to get it all in. So basically you just want to tighten one down, and tighten the other, and then just until they're all tight. I don't like to tighten one down at, the, at a time and then go for the other one because you want it to line up right, so. Okay, you don't have to muscle it too much just as long as it's nice and snug and you're good. And then your seal, just tuck that back in the door and that's it. So that's that tip for today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you guys have any questions whatsoever, feel free to email me, chris at classicvwbugs.com, or visit my website, www.classicvwbugs.com. Peace.